Hello, church family. Happy Friday. I'm bringing you a word of encouragement today from the book of Job. And you might be thinking, Job had a lot of bad stuff going on there. And that's true. But there are a lot of good things that we can learn from the book of Job as well. So we're going to dive right in. Job 1.1 says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Job was a good man who was walking with God. And he was also a wealthy man. He had a big family. He had a lot of possessions. And Satan's issue with Job was that his life was easy. He thought, you know, if if Job's life is so easy, of course he can walk with God and he can be thankful because he has a lot of stuff. He has an easy life. But if his life is difficult, then surely he'll turn away from God. So God gives Satan permission to test Job. And so all in one day, all of his possessions and all of his children are taken away from him. And we have the advantage of perspective. We can read the story and we see how it's set up. But for Job, he doesn't understand why this is happening. He doesn't know about the conversation between God and Satan. This is just an unexpected, out of the blue catastrophe for him. And it says in Job 1, 20 through 22, Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. So even though Job had no idea why these things were happening to him, he didn't sin. He, um, he grieved. He did. But he also worshipped. I love that he worshipped in the midst of his suffering. And then things get worse for Job. His health is attacked. And then he gets some pretty terrible support from his wife. So ladies, if you're ever looking for an example of what not to do to support your husband in a time of need, here it is. Job 2, 9 says, Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. Yeah, terrible, terrible example to follow. And then here's Job's response in the next verse. He says, You speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God and shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. I love that Job's integrity holds fast regardless of the circumstance. In the best of times for him and in the worst of times, he's holding on to his integrity. He is knowing that God is good, that God is the same, and he is holding on to that. I love that. A lot of the rest of the book of Job is conversations with his friends. I put that in quotes because they're not very good friends. Their form of comfort is to blame Job for all of the bad things that are happening to him, which is not the case. And after a lot of back and forth toward the end of the book, after Job pours out his heart, and I'd say that he grieves in the book, he really does. He is honest and open and pours out his heart. He even says that he wish, wishes that he was never born or that he was like a stillborn child who never saw life which is some pretty extreme feelings that he's pouring out to God. And he's wondering why these things are happening. And at the end, God speaks. And here are some of the things, just some of the things that God says. Job 38 verse 4 says, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. And skip down to verse 12. It says, Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? The next chapter, 39, verses 26 through 27 says, Is it by your understanding that the hawk soars and spreads his wings toward the south? Is it at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high? God is, is talking about how much bigger he is, how much bigger his understanding is, how much control he has. Since the beginning of time, over all creation, in everything, God is in control. God knows what's going on. And Job doesn't have the same perspective and he is humbled by God's response. So some of the key points that we can get from the book of Job, he didn't sin in the midst of his suffering. He worshiped God in the midst of his suffering. 
He cried out in honest anguish to God in the midst of his suffering. And also he calls his friends miserable comforters. So during this time, maybe you can identify with Job. Maybe your world is crashing down. Maybe things are extremely bad in your life right now. Maybe you can learn some things about worshiping God, about being honest and crying out to God with what's going on in your life. Also, um, maybe you can identify with his wife who's maybe dealing with some extreme issues, but a little more indirectly, or maybe you identify with his friends. Nothing bad is happening to you, but you can see all around our world, bad things are happening to other people. Maybe we can learn lessons from them about what not to do. How can we not be a miserable comforter, but how can we be a good comforter? And stay tuned because Joe is going to be speaking about that on Sunday morning in the message about comfort, about God's comfort. And we'll dig into that a little more. So stay tuned for that. But there are a lot of great things that we can get from the book of Job, whether we identify with Job or we identify with his friends. And let me leave you with one of my favorite verses. This is Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Sometimes in our own understanding, we cannot comprehend what is going on and what God's plan is. But we can lean on him. We can trust in him. We can know that he is good, that he is the same, whether things are good or bad in our lives. We can trust him. And if we are like Job's friends and we're not the ones who are in the midst of suffering, how can we comfort others during this time? So church family, take that with you. Hold on to that as you um, go into the weekend and, and watch the sermon this weekend. And let's look for opportunities that we have to lean on God and to comfort those around us.